I want to get into this a little bit more and touch upon kind of some some of the dynamics because mm -hmm. obviously Roma aren't Real Madrid. They don't have the global coverage that the other clubs that Mourinho's been at has. Locally, um, I've said this before, I've written it, people who've coached, people who've worked in both cities have told me, there is the, the club with the most pressure in the world, media pressure, sort of continuous, is Real Madrid and Barcelona, you know, pretty much equal in terms of yeah. local media and attention. I think after that, I think it's Roma, without, without question. I'm talking local here. They really are up in your grill continuously. So it's not an easy place to work. And Mourinho really conquered. Yeah, uh, but he was always going to, right? Because he's that personality. Yes and no. I don't, I mean, I think you have to, you have that personality. He's certainly very good at winning the trust of the players. And none of the players have turned on him. Even the ones that he kind of threw under the bus yeah. uh, have turned on him, you know. Um, Borja Mayoral, for example, who, you know, Roma had the option of, of keeping him. Um, he was on a, he was on a two-year loan. In, in, in the second year, under Mourinho, he hardly played. Mourinho basically decided, oh, Borja Mayoral is no good. We'll keep him around for another year. I'll bring in Tammy Abraham, who, who did well at first, right? Yeah, yeah. And he says, Ma Mayoral is no good, not worth it, blah, blah, blah. And now you see Borja Mayoral, he's the second leading goal scorer in Spain. So he could come back and say, yeah, I was disappointed that I never got to play, but Mourinho taught me this and that. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people still have this loyalty. I mean, Paul Pogba probably doesn't, but yeah. you know, a lot. So, so he had this dynamic where when he took over the club, and, and I think, again, people don't always know their history here, but the year before, under Paulo Fonseca, Roma... They were in the top four until March. They slipped down to seventh, um, and they reached the Europa League semifinal, uh, where they lost to I think it was Benfica. Yeah. That season they had an absolute ton of of injuries, and they never uh, had the investment that Jose had. Well, after. this is the big thing, right? The last kind of eight months of the season, you had a situation where um, the previous owner, uh, Jim Pallotta was in the process of selling the club. The director of football um, was sent away, Gianluca Petracchi. Um, so there was no director of football. There was almost nobody in charge of the club. Yeah, yeah. Complete, I mean, Paolo Fonseca really was a man alone. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I bring this up is people say, oh, what does it matter? Sir Alex never, you know, whatever. Like, leave Sir Alex to one side. But this is also the complaint that Mourinho had this year. Mourinho complained. He says, like, wait a minute. Like, he did have a sporting director, Thiago Pinto, who's also leaving. Yeah. But he said, ah... The Friedkins are kind of absentee landlords. That's the narrative that Mourinho's put out because they're in the States. They never speak to the media. They're far away, a bit like the Glazers. Um, and he's like, I'm the only, I'm the face of the club. I have to do all the talking. I have to do everything in addition to coaching the team. Um, they have a CEO, Lina Sokoulos, I think is her last name. But she's new or relatively new and whatever. And she never talks either. Jago Pinto never talks. So there, you had this, 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 this era of isolation, right? Mourinho's first season, like you said, they spend a lot of money. Some of that, to be fair, was money that was had already yeah, been committed yeah, yeah. beforehand. Um, and he finishes with one more point than Paulo Fonseca had the year before. Uh, and he wins the, the Conference League. Yeah, which, which is... Look, Steve Nichol absolutely rubbished it uh, when I was on the show Monday night. He said, oh, what does that mean? That you're the best of the six-place teams in the big five leagues? Technically, yes. It, well, that's the league, that's the, the European Cup for it, between 6th and 10th. So. so it's not necessarily a great achievement. No, no, but it's still it, a trophy. So It's still a trophy. a trophy, the fans loved it. Um, then, of course, last season, uh, Tammy Abraham gets injured and so on, and you find yourself in this situation. But at every stage, with the money that, that they had, and again, they were limited, they had a positive net, net spent of about $130 million, yeah. uh, over the two years. But equally... I think that's also because they sold very well. Yeah. And they only made loan signings or free agents, uh, just about. Um, other than Roger Ibanez, who I think is actually a decent player, yeah, but agree. a lot of... Well, yeah, Mourinho threw... It's another one who Mourinho threw yeah. under the bus. Other than him, I don't see anybody else who they let go who, off the top of my head, who would have necessarily started and played regularly. I agree. Um, 
and then you make this decision and you bring in people like Jeannie Vinaldum last season. Um, the, the influence of George Mendes, I think, is part of this narrative as well. Of course. Sergio Oliveira, who yeah. cost him a, a, a mint in loan fees. Renato Sanchez. Renato Sanchez this year. He's not a great look. No. Um, but these are all older players. These are unknown players. And so I think when you look at it, what are you building towards? But, but again, I, I, I think the whole idea, surely, with Mourinho, a very short-termist coach, because this is what he is, from the, from the ownership was, listen, we just need to get into the Champions League. We need to get them. So the, the, the aim and very much the, the trophy will be the Champions League. And then we get that money. And then once we've got that money of the Champions League secure, then we finish top four, then, then we can see you know, where we are and, and build on that. The problem is, once you've missed out on, on it, what do you have left? We said, so you've got a super expensive wage bill, too far too expensive for Roma's um, like revenues. You've got no Champions League, as we said. Okay, you sell your stadium out, which is great, and that clearly you could see the passion, and that's important. Mourinho plays six derbies against Lazio. Four defeats, one draw, one win. So if you're not, if you're not doing well, if you're not reaching the, the, the targets that you have, which is the Champions League, and you don't even win the derbies, which on which a bad Rome really, really exactly matters. on a bad season, this what saves your yeah. saves your your bottom really is that you can't even against the Lazio team. Let's be honest, that hasn't been that great. You know, this is not the Lazio that won the title under Sven. No, no. And, and and this is another thing, right? He he always points out because look, he he's always selling when he's speaking, right? He's always justifying, he's always explaining. Yeah. Right? So this summer, like he started talking about all the money that Lazio spent, right? Uh, ignoring the fact that Lazio were able to spend all this money because they sold arguably their most important player, one of the two most important players, Sergei Milinkovic, Saudi, yeah. to Saudi Arabia for a ton of money. Yeah. And that's why then they were able to reinvest some of that. But Lazio's wage bill is a fraction of Roma's. Completely. Um, and we know, we, we, we know because we have data on the shows, wage bills are the best predictor of, of league finish. Yeah. Um, he... He has been really unlucky with injuries. I also think, though, there's a sense, there was a sense from, from the ownership point of view that he was becoming a little bit erratic and a little bit out of control. Well, all the red cards. I mean, Seven red on. cards in two and a half years. Come on. Uh, the ban for, 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 for confronting Anthony Taylor. Which was the Europa. worst, probably, right? It's that kind of attitude. If you're an owner and you see one of your employees especially the most important one maybe in your yeah. club, d behaving like this? That, yeah. And it, it shows you, I think, shows a lack of professionalism. Because I can deal with, in the heat of the game, and Mourinho's yeah, been sent yeah. off in the heat of the game, but this is afterwards. It's at the airport, man. You're, 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 I don't think it's here, but I think, I thought, I think it was the, the car park uh, under, under yeah. the stadium, right? But there, you had a pro trophy presentation, right? You've lost. It's gone the other way. You may think that you were robbed or whatever, but to go and do this, you're only hurting your club yeah. because you're going to get slapped. You're embarrassing your club, and you're going to get slapped with that ban, which means that you can't be on 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 the touchline. Um, he's made other decisions. The the lost his last game against Milan, obviously. He drops Rui Patricio for for Miles Villar, which Rui Patricio was supposed to be his yeah. guy. Not been great since coming over. Obviously, shares an agent with him. Yeah. Um, earlier this year, Chris Smalling, uh, who's been injured for a long time, a major absence. He comes out and he says like, well, you know, yeah, he's on the mend, but it's tough to say because, you know, the thing about Smalling is he has a different pain threshold than a lot of other athletes. Yeah, he's weak, basically. What, what are you mean. saying? Yeah, like, yeah. like Smalling, oh, I have a boo-boo? Now, even if it were true, and I don't believe for one second that it is, yeah. why would you undermine one of your key and best played players like that? Remember Rick Karlsdrop? What he did to Carl's drop? I mean, I know in the end they kind of made peace. Yeah. But that was... Or in his first season, they lose 6-1 to Bodo Glimpse yeah. uh, in the, the Conference League. They, they he played his, his B team. Uh, but then, of course, made five substitutions and sent on of a course. lot of starters. And got killed. And he said, oh, this is my point. I only have 13 players. And, <laughs> no and then I have a bunch of other guys who are no good. You know, like, I, how it's do you... I, you as an owner, you're saying these are club assets. I, I have to, you, you have to look after them. Or coming out and saying, oh, I really want to extend my contract. I want to extend my contract. I want to extend my contract. Um, the club's saying, no, we're going to wait till the end of the season precisely to see if they can afford him or not. And he's like, well, you know, if I'm not here next season, it's not going to be my decision. 
Like, what are you saying? Yeah. Like, no, no club owner wants to be treated like that. No, ultimately. no. They're 100%. the ones who pay the bills, and they're the ones who have the control. And we can we yeah. can wave an angry fist at them all we want, but they're the ones who are in charge. Um, Nemanja Matic, another one, right? Yeah. Spends a ton one of, of money. One of his guys as well. Supposedly one of his guys, yeah. right? I signed him twice. Yeah. And then he's there for one season. Now, I was, that was kind of weird to me because they did get money back from him. Was it like $5 million yeah, something? Yeah, 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 from when? But at the end, he's like, oh, Matic had been talking to, he fell out with him and he's like, oh, well, you know, Matic didn't want to be here. Uh, you know, he'd been talking to, to Ren. It was Ren where he yeah, went, yeah. right? For, for, for months. You really, you really think, and I, I'm, Ren is a lovely place. Yes, yeah, like, lovely place. I'm sure it's no room, though. I can it's not that. the eternal city. No. You think Nemanja Matic all of a sudden decides, oh, yeah, for my football ambition, my career. At 35 years old. I want to go to yeah, Ren, live I in know. France, where I've never lived before, by the way, right? Um, so all these things people saw as, frankly, erratic behaviors. Treatment of yeah. Nicolò Zagnolo, another one, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and again, with Zagnolo, arguments on both sides, contracts. But there was always something going always on. Always something. I mean, this sacking, I think, to my calculations, takes his uh, compensation packages, if you put them all together, to almost 100 million euros. So he's done really well in getting sacked. But as we said, he's going to turn 61 at the end of the month. I think 26th of January is his birthday. I, I never thought he would get after Spurs a top job. Roma is a top job. I never thought he would. Right now, I see even less. But this is just me. Maybe I'm a bit naive. Maybe I undermined the power of George Mendes, Jose Mourinho's kind of legacy, aura, whatever you want. Where do you see him next? Uh, the only place I see him, yeah, before you go, Wolves. is Saudi Arabia. Okay. Not even well, in the Premier League. Not, not even Wolves would agree to have him back. Not Newcastle, not Forest, not a club like Sevilla in Spain where they might be looking for someone like him. I, I just don't see anything outside of Saudi Arabia and maybe a national team. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. One is if you get Mourinho at a Mourinho price tag, you know, paying Mourinho what he was earning at, at Roma or even more than that, um, and with the demands from Mourinho, because like you said, they spent 100 million. Yeah. They were one of the biggest spending teams in Europe in his first season, right? Then I, I would agree with you. I, it's not going to be like a big six, it's going to be one of Europe's top 10, 12 clubs. This is not going to happen, right? Uh, the thing with Saudi is he had the opportunity to go to Saudi yeah. before, and he chose not to. And I think part of that is Mourinho is not... Mo Money is important to Mourinho in the sense that he wants to be respected, and so if he's the Roma, you know, if he signs for Roma, he needs to be the second highest paid manager in Serie A because he's won far more than Pioli and Zaghi and whoever else, right? Fine, right? But getting paid 100 million to go to Saudi, if he then falls off the face of the earth and nobody ever talks about him again, no, and true. he's playing in front of 10,000 people or, or coaching front of 10, I think that would make his head explode. He had the chance and he turned it down. True, he turned it down because he already had a club in Roma. So you remember after the defeat if he gets, last season, he, was, he gave all this like, I'm staying here, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Because he, had, he still had a year on his contract. Is it better to go to Saudi Arabia or to, to go nowhere, be unemployed? Because that's why he would be. And kind so, of disappear of... So I, I, I think he wants to have another go on, on a big stage. And, and I'm sorry, right now, going and managing Saudi is not, yeah, okay. is not the big stage, so right? So give me where on the so big stage. So I think in the immediate, could it be a club? I, I've thought of actually clubs in the Mendes orbit, right? Yeah, me Atletico too. Madrid, Sevilla. No, yeah, Wolves. Sevilla is the only one. Uh, I think Madrid, Simon is not going anywhere. Wolves, um, I think you might even extend it. I think Marseille is kind of Mendes-ish, let's face it, right? Yeah, but... Um, but there's 101 reasons, and everybody has the financial stability, right, requirements now. So it becomes really, really yeah. difficult to roll the dice like that. Um, people have suggested MLS. I don't think he's quite there unless, again... It's a club where you have an owner who falls in love with them and yeah. says, okay, all our DP money, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's go big. I think it's going to be a national team. I think that might be the most appealing for him. And, yeah. and I think it could make sense for another reason, too, other than the fact that he's always said he wanted to finish with a national team, blah, blah, blah. So which one then? Well, the Sweden. We said Sweden are looking for somebody. Here you go. Ibra as an assistant. I, Mourinho as a number one. Ibra has a job now, sort of. I know. Um, but, uh, but no, but 
I mean, we, we can talk about which one. It's not going to be Portugal. We see Roberto just arrived. And yeah. also, I don't think he would want to manage. I think he'd love to manage Portugal one day, but not as long as Cristiano's there. Yeah. And, of course, Cristiano will play for another 15 years because he has to go and catch Christine Sinclair. Yeah. Uh, with her her goal-scoring record. Um, but the reason it would make sense is Mourinho in short bursts. And Mourinho in longer bursts is exhausting, right? Wears mm. players down. Mourinho in short bursts, so where you're only with the players every couple months, he can be really energizing and galvanizing. We've seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mourinho in knockout competitions. Yeah. You may not like his style That's, of play, yeah, exactly. but if he goes and he turns everything into some kind of gladiator, yeah. editorial matchup, it could work, right? Yeah, I'm with you 100%. So, Tell me which one. <laughs> of the big countries, of the big countries. No, it doesn't need to be a big country. Well, come, come on. No, he, can, it, can it be a Sweden? I'm not, I'm not saying it will be Sweden, it. right? Yeah. But if I get Mourinho, if I get him jacked up, if I get him G'd up at Sweden, all of a sudden, Alexander Isak, you know, he's like, Isak is my Ibrahimovic and blah, 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 and whatever. And they go on a run in a tournament in, in the Euros or, or, or whatever, right? You know which one is going to come available? The only one. The only one of the big. France will become available, but we know who's coming next. Italy is gone. Spain will be gone. And you think Spain? Marina, yeah. No, no, it's, Portugal, it's not. we said, Germany have one. The only one would be England because Guy Southgate is going to leave after yeah. the Euros. And I don't think England and I don't think the FA would make that decision. No, no, no. It's, so, it's not going to be. It's not going to be on that level. But then I'm but, not sure if he wants to take it. Then why would you? Why would you want to? What go if it's Uruguay Mourinho? ahead of the World Cup? I mean, I think Marcelo Bielsa is there for a while. I don't know, but I. I but no, I'm, I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. If you're talking about the club, right? Yeah, yeah. Or. Or Argentina post Messi and he goes and he does it for free with a love and I'm saying a club where you get where you get country, players yeah. with the kind of a country yeah, yeah. with the kind of the personality to do that to embrace that I think that is the only scenario I can see where he would do well. There's another option. What if Mourinho has his come to Jesus moment? What if he says, you know what? <laughs> why is why is his come to Jesus moment? Okay, which is which is this right? Okay, there's people who love me and there's people who hate me. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to remove my mask and look at myself objectively. Yeah. I have won tremendous amounts. I have won 26 trophies or 28 or however yeah. many he likes to count, right? Um, I've been sacked from I've got my, my last four jobs, really my last five jobs because yeah. Real Madrid, effectively, that ended, right? Yeah, Before, yeah. Have ended prematurely. Yeah. And people think that I'm just a guy who goes to a club and they buy great players for him and I can't manage. Yeah. I'm going to prove them otherwise. I've proved it in the past when I won the treble with this Porto. This is not going to happen. What if I take it back? What if I go and I take some job for like a million euros a year, right? Nice and cheap. And I work with limited resources and I overachieve. But that's never going to happen. It's yeah, just, it's never going to happen. The one I could see. It's never going to happen. It's like though? Benfica or it's Porto. Like, no, no, but tell me why it's never going to happen. Why would Mourinho do that? He doesn't have anything to prove to anyone. The, uh, suddenly, I'm, I, I'm guaranteed that's not how he sees if it. If he wants a job, well, first of all, he doesn't have anything to prove. No, he doesn't. He doesn't care. But if he wants to prove that right now, he can do a phenomenal job. He's going to tell you he's the only one to have won all the European trophies. No, I know, but what if he removes that? What if he takes a step out of it and he says, what if I go and I do something that's never been done before? Will uh, Chamberlain, yes. you, know, you know your basketball, yeah. right? Will Chamberlain scored yeah. 100 points. He yeah. retired with more than 50 points average. People said, oh, look, you're only good because you're selfish and you can't pass the ball. And well, plus, he was also seven foot two. Yeah, he was stuff. massive. So what did he do? One season, yeah. he said, I'm going to lead the league in assists. And what happened? And he did. Yeah. Again, this is no, back then. This is no question. Like, no, but... <laughs> I always wonder about that, right? No, I know. Taking a it's step a down. It's idea. It's precisely because he has nothing to prove, but precisely because he has all the money and trophies and whatever, right? So why would you go into that hustle? And by the way, if Presumably that goes, he enjoys working. If that goes wrong or bad, it's even it makes it even worse. It's so he's not going to take that. He's still going to be the guy who won the treble. It doesn't matter. He won two trebles, in fact. Yeah, two, two. I, I, I mean, I, I would love the idea for him to go back to Ulion Leira or whatever, where he all started. No, he doesn't have to go that far down it the doesn't, pyramid. It won't happen. It won't happen. I even I would I'll be even surprised if he takes a Sweden job, like a like a, a Sweden type of job, like a mid tier national. Yeah, team. yeah. I'd be surprised even. I think in the immediate, it's either Mendesphere, it's it's one of the yeah. things. It's either Mendesphere, it's he takes a he takes a step back in terms of uh, wages and demands, or it's a mid major, or national team. So yeah. 
I was thinking Rafa Benitez went to Celta Vigo. I don't think I don't think this is Jose's sphere. However, do you think Brazil? You, you mentioned Rafa Benitez and, Mar and no, Mourinho. No, no, I'm just in saying. In the same sentence, you know you're you're you're, you're disrespecting Mourinho, I, right? I was not <laughs> trying to disrespect you, Jose. I was just saying, you know, some right. like Benitez who won the Champions League too, yeah, yeah, have gone down really low. I don't think this is Mourinho at all. Do you think, however, that Brazil? For a timing of a week or 10 days, let's say, regret having appointed Dorival Jr. as the national team head coach. Now, I mean, I guess you could maybe break that contract, but, uh, and had they not done that, so had, would they still be looking now for a manager, a head coach? Would Mourinho fit what they want, fit the bill, and would they regret then? You know what? Not having waited a bit longer. Anything can happen, right? But, you're right, they could still break the contract. If there was a glut of, the same way that Ancelotti was linked to it, mm. a glut of senior players on this Brazil team who know Mourinho saying, guys, Dorival Jr., come on, man, the dude with 23 jobs in 23 years, Yeah. right? Let's just oh, do it, just, just for the Copa America. Let's call him in, he knows us all, you know, no I language mean, barrier. I that would be, I, I'm not his biggest fan, but that would be it's amazing. Not, it's not unthinkable. Um, I think it would take a lot of courage to do it. Yeah. But, you know, they've been there before with similar yeah. types of... Brazil, for all the Jogo Bonito stuff, they won silverware with Dunga, with... Uh, 94 uh, was not... A, <laughs> with yeah. Luis Felipe Scolari, yeah. right? Uh, so, I mean, that would be tremendous. It would be amazing. Um, but, again, it wouldn't be a show, It wouldn't be a long-term thing. I mean, that would be... That could put him back on the map, and then he yeah. goes and he... Jumps and replaces Luis Enrique Paris Saint Germain. Oh, let's behave. Maybe Luis Campos can have a word. <laughs> <laughs>